Hello, you eerily eager Eevee, and welcome back to HAC Games. We got Charizard here, and his good friend Hayden. And that can only mean one thing. We're opening Pokemon product. Now, we're opening a booster box, which we haven't done in forever for Pokemon. We got it nice and sealed. We've already got the chalk on there. And this is Darkness Ablaze booster box. Let's flip it over. It says some things on the back that aren't very important. Brilliant flame on the darkest day. I'm not even going to read that for you, because it's not relevant we're just gonna hop in now the big chase here is the charizard v max so we'll be going for that and this won't be the only video we've got three more booster boxes for this so probably three total videos unless i decide to sell one of those darkness of blazes so let's get in and first and foremost on the news front on the the casual discussion i want to start talking about what i talk about every week or every episode shining fates because it wouldn't be Pokemon if we weren't talking about Shining Fates. Now, I got some news in from MVP today. Uh, we've already got something. Maybe it's like the last video. Maybe this is the Charizard V Max. Nah, it's the Galarian Slowbro V. That's lame. Uh, but anyway, so I got some news in today from MVP Sports and More. They are one of the main people I buy a lot of my product from. Great, sh Generally great shipping. I plugged them in the Alakazam V video. They kind of stumbled there. Uh, but great prices as well, so that's why I go with them. But anyway, I um, I got a couple of Shining Fates products from them, and even they're already overpriced on Shining Fates, which is kind of impressive, given that normally they're so competitive with pricing. But um, they gave me some news today that Shining Fates, like Champion's Path, will be shipped in multiple waves. So Champion's Path was shipped in two waves, and that really kind of, you know, slowed down how a lot of people actually, or when a lot of people actually got their product. Um, you know, it wasn't a very beloved thing to do, but it was necessary because of COVID. And according to MVP, we're going to get twice as many waves for this time. Now, MVP made some assurances that last time they got all their stuff shipped out within four weeks. So I'm not super worried on when mine will get here. Uh, but it does mean that, you know, something to be aware of. If you're, if it takes a while for your stuff to get here, don't panic. Don't think you've been scammed. That's the Pokemon company doing what they do best, delaying products. Also on that front, it seems like, you know, some of the, uh, stock information has started to come back. I've, uh, gotten, I had a pre-order with TCG Stadium the other day and well, the other day it came back canceled more or less two swanas going to the park today i hope you brought your bread because they're gonna attack you otherwise but yeah so tcg stadium canceled my entire order on me it was like a large 700 hundred dollar order uh just because apparently they actually only got one percent of how much they ordered not even ten percent so this set is going to be insane it's gonna be heavily uh, look, look at that foiling it's gonna be heavily underprinted it's going to be heavily in demand and uh, start looking for it now. So even with those cancellations, I do have some products on the way. So many mad parties. It's just, this is like one of my least favorite decks in standard. So it really just wants to throw it in my face that it's part of this set. Uh, but anyway, oh, wow. Who ever seen this? Look at that, look at that, he's got an icicle beard. Oh, I bet that's a bitch to clean and groom what do you do you gotta you gotta melt that and refreeze it every time you want to clean your beard oh my Ugh. but anyway even though most of my product got canceled i have been able to find a little bit more uh this stuff is way more uh overpriced than the original stuff i got poor fat little guy the greedy pokemon i can see that he's very cute um but i do want to i didn't want to make sure i had something to open on the channel Whenever that came out, I did want to chase whatever's actually going on in there. Because I don't know what the chase is. I think it's uh, going to be a Charizard or something. Because that's what all the good chase cards are. Oh, I just can't get a real card here. Uh, but we'll see. Also on that front, I do have some Champion's Path stuff coming up along the way as well. Just some simple stuff. Um, some of it might not even be good. I found some uh, Hatterene V boxes on Amazon for 20 bucks, Which, I mean, that's market that's great that's what you want to see but they were used that's how amazon marked them up now in the used you know category they said it was just because the packaging was damaged um we'll have to see 
I'm actually kind of willing to spend a little bit of mon uh, money and roll the dice to see if that's uh, a repack or really just damaged packaging. You know, if we look at the Alakazam V videos where I did have damaged packaging, where it was just like it had a little hole in it, like I can live with that. If they're not resealed packs, I'm thrilled with that. So a little bit of Champion's Fate, little or a little bit of Champion's Path, a little bit of Shining Fate's coming. And the general gist there is Champion's Path is still really, really overpriced, really above market. Um, and damn, I cannot get anything good. And uh, Shining Fates is going to be as well. And you can expect the market price to probably raise. Pre-orders are still just about impossible if you can get them. Get them. Okay. All right, what do we got here? Can I? All right. You know, I'll pay a bit more attention to the opening. You know, this is my kid's watercolor of Teddy Ursa. And maybe that'll give us something good. I uh, lied to you right away. Uh, mimic you. That's not even the good mimic you. Hey, but toughness. And that's not worth anything. But it's a good card. Which, I mean, that can bring me to the next topic. Playing. You know, I've still been playing a lot of PTCG on the online client. It's... I don't know if it's my favorite to play. It's It's almost as fun as Magic. And in some ways, it's more fun than Magic. There we go. We finally got something. Uh, this foil Fletchender. Ooh. I was going to make a California joke, but that's not the move there. Butterfree V. Nice. Nice. Something. Something. That's what we're looking for, folks. Is something. Even if it's the saddest Pokemon of all time. Or a bunch of capes of toughness. But anyway. So yeah, I've been playing a bunch of Pokemon. And um, some things I'm kind of noticing about it is first of all it seems there's kind of a cheap standard and i think that's for two reasons number one i think it is because of the collectors i think just there's so many collectors that you do have uh an actual influx of i have you know i don't even like swans to begin with because they're so aggressive i've been attacked by many a swan in my life and now i'm getting three of them so far not cool not cool but anyway, yeah, so I think the standard is cheaper both because of the collector aspect where there's just more um, circulating. I think this is good. Where there's just more uh, single circulating because the people opening the product just don't want to use it as much. That's not good. I guess we want white codes. I don't remember how the codes work, folks. The other thing I think helps a lot with um, keeping standard kind of cheap is... The fact that you have these reusable cards, these Crobat Vs, these um, these Dedenne GXs that pretty much go in every single deck. And so, like, once you get your playset of those, this Pokemon's name is More Lull. This is just, this is a Twitch Designs Pokemon. This is exactly the name Twitch would come up with, except it would be, like, More Keck W instead of Lull, um, you know? Hey, you, Twitch chat deserves a chance to design Pokemon too, okay? You know, don't don't take that from Twitch chat. But yeah, no, I think the other thing is the fact that since there's these reusable cards that go in every deck, you kind of collect those. And once you collect those, uh, Marini, oh man, I love this Pokemon. I don't know why it's the Burial Star Pokemon. I also don't know why Corsola is just guest starring in this, this crayon picture of this mean Pokemon. Oh man, I love it though. Uh, um, but yeah, no, so I think you, you know, you collect that, oh, this is cool, I like this art, you collect that core group of, um, cards, and then you're just, like, good to go. A lot of the, uh, next cards you need for the decks, it's not as many, you know, you'll need, like, building a Picarom deck versus a, uh, Cinescorch deck. You're gonna have 40 cards, roughly, that are the exact same and then you're going to have 20 that are different. And of those 20, because of the uh, first part, where there's so many people collecting, so much more than playing, uh, I think those 20 are then going to be very reasonably priced, you know? A lot of the meta cards are only 5 to 10 bucks. And then you toss in the fact that TPCI makes these League Battle decks, which you can redeem online as well. And, you know, they'll just, that's just a meta deck ready to go. And so to me, it seems like getting in to the Pokemon TCG standard is like way easier than any other card game I have ever tried to get into. Uh, so many of them. Stop. You're so greedy and you keep showing up, but stop, stop, go away. Um, so I think that's really cool. 
like it, people always complain about magic standard and i think magic standard is actually in a pretty solid spot it's not too expensive we've seen more expensive standards in the past uh look at those papayas um but this okay that's something that's something we got the combo skin into this i didn't even know this was in this set the caesar v i've never seen this card hack off okay okay, okay that's something it's another v we'll take v's we want v's folks where was i where was i Oh, the other thing uh, I think I really like about it, outside of the cheap standard, which I think I was saying that Magic doesn't achieve that that much, is I feel like there's less dead hands. And I think that is both because of just, like, not having to use lands, but also because there's so many draw sevens. Wow, look at that. This is a gorgeous card. That is some of the uh, best foiling I've seen in a while. That's an interesting ability as well. I don't know if that's any good... It is quite good because it affects your uh, your opponent's weaknesses as well. And he still keeps one resistance. Anyway. Anyway. But yeah, there's so many draw sevens that it's so easy to recover. It's so much easier to recover from a bad hand. Like in general, Pokemon is a lot more liberal with its card economy than Magic is. And I think that goes a long way in helping the game feel more... I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say playable, but feel more like consistent. Yeah, consistent is what I'm looking for than magic. And I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying the fact that every time I load up to a game, or almost every time, uh, I actually play a real game and I don't get, like, land screwed. And I think that's really, really cool. Whereas that is definitely not the case in magic. And the other thing I think I really like about Pokemon is it seems like there's a pretty diverse meta. I think this leads to the fact that you've got those core 40 cards. It becomes really easy for people to experiment and play around. You know, you've got Charlie on decks. You've got Picarom decks. You obviously have ADPZ decks. You've got Mad Party running around. Um, what else do you have? You've got Cinescorch. You've got Colossal. Uh, I've even seen, like, some Inteleon decks and some Decidueye decks. And now I'm at, like, 10 decks. You look at Magic. Magic's got, like, Rule Adventures. That's a real one couple others i mean there's obviously more decks you know in magic standard like than the one or two but i feel like uh it really gets boiled down to a single meta deck in magic a lot faster it feels like all those decks i just listed are just about competitive which says a lot so all of that together has really been my uh opinion on playing pokemon i've really enjoyed it kind of the exact opposite of how marini feels every day is how i feel about uh playing pokemon online and uh, i enjoy playing better than i do opening this booster box that's for sure just nothing man. so many capes so many capes and i'm gonna need that toughness i'm gonna need this toughness to get through this brutal brutal box opening that's not good we didn't want to see that i think we hate green codes but i don't remember how the codes works. Volcarona. The Volcanic Moth. And yeah, when I'm going off camera here, folks, I'm just putting the lands down slightly off camera. Okay. Back, back into it. What is, uh, what do we have here? Uh, 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 oh, this actually might be worth a dollar or so. Oh my gosh. Folks. This is a rough box opening. This is one of the rougher box openings we've ever had in just in general, let alone in Pokemon. No secrets, no V Maxes, just a few Vs that are not worth anything, and a bunch of terrible rares. Poor Wimpod. It's taken in the sun. So many Bunnelbees. Bunnelby just reminds me of the Mad Party pack that. Uh, this is like the fifth greedent. You're so greedy, you keep eating up all my value. I need you to stop. I need you to stop, buddy. Struggle gloves? Yeah, this is me right now. I got my damn struggle gloves on as I try to open packs and as I try to get something of value. Uh, how many more do we have? We have seven packs left, folks. Seven packs. And so on the Pokemon deck front, I've mostly been playing... I love the Mewtwo deck, but I've been trying to learn ADPization uh, a lot more. And there is an ADPization video up on the channel. Recommend you check that out more diggers be this is you know if i didn't know better i'd think it's resealed but 
I saw the chalk. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been trying to learn ADP Zation a bit more. Uh, there's a lot of non-obvious play patterns there. It's a really fun deck, though. I'll definitely say that. And haven't been playing as much Picaram, and I still love just uh, Mew 3, just the standard, old-school, pure psychic build of uh, Mew 3. So I've been playing that as well, and uh, recently uh, put together a Charlie on deck, and been kind of impressed by how that performs. For a single Pokemon deck, it performs pretty well, and it feels very strong. It feels very resilient, uh, kind of like this, this cool little elephant. But I do still hate Mad Party decks, you know? I mean, look, look at this card. This card is beautiful, but it's totally worthless. Just like this and everything else we're getting in this terrible box. This box is on fire. There's your billowing smoke. We've got a heat energy, at least. That's something. Oh, my God. Give, give us the centipede. You know, normally I, I hate centipedes. You live in New York. You get these house centipedes. They're terrifying. They're way scarier than a Cinescorch. But, man, do I want the centipede right about now. This is, I believe this is full art. I mean, yeah, this is full art at least. That's something. Or I think this one. Yeah, this is the full art one. I just wanted to double check. That's something. We at least got a full art V. This is probably at most worth like maybe five bucks. I'd be shocked if it's worth anything more than that. I mean, like I said, I didn't know this card existed before I started opening this. So it's not a very meta card to begin with. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, this is Twitch chat. They're more lulling at me right now after this. Toxel, Skitty, Rowlet, Wishy Washy, Torchic. Torchic into the Talonflame. I think that's how that evolution... That's not how that evolution line works at all. Um, I apologize. I'm showing my lack of knowledge. Oh, PC, Ariados, Doug Trio. Two packs left, folks. Two packs. I pretty much finished up what I want to talk about here. Shining Fates. A little bit of Champion's Path. And then just a quick review of Standard. Again, if you want to get into Pokemon uh, TCG, playing online, playing Standard, I highly recommend you pick up a League V Battle deck. Um, the ADP one is very good. I've done crazy things. These cards are all over the place. I'll fix that in post. Uh, the ADP one is very good, and the Picaram one is good as well. So, And they'll give you a bunch of trainer cards. They'll get you everything you need to get started, to get on your way, and get a meta deck. And they're not too hard or expensive to kind of trick out from there. And then uh, you can go check out the channel for some instructions on how to play ADPZ. I'll be putting up some more videos along those lines as well. And also some um, Picaram videos when I get around to it. That's a little bit lower priority since I just don't enjoy playing that deck quite as much. Gar, You know, I'm tempted to just end the video right now. I am. I should. My packs, my piles don't even make sense. I'm so defeated. <sighs> but yeah, if you want to play online, get the League Battle decks. You won't regret it. I also don't think you'll regret playing online. Standard is cheap to get into. You get those reusable staples, so you can play a bunch of decks. There's a very diverse meta, and it feels like there's not that many non-games. So, as always, you can buy... I don't know which of these cards you would ever want to buy. I don't know if I'll even list any of these cards. But... If both of those things are true, you can buy these cards at hjc.cards. That'll take you to our TCG player. Or you can find us on eBay also at HJC Cards. I uh, just want to thank you all for watching. We'll have a couple more of these and hopefully we'll get some better results. We won't be scraping the bottom of the barrel like this. But we'll have to see. Again, thanks for watching. Have a good night. And just be good to one another.